Millions of Americans take sleeping pills each year to get a good night's sleep. But as Haley Hernandez tells us, taking those pills may put your health at risk. Dr. Reva Matthew from Memorial Hermann says patients suffering with sleeplessness are often desperate to medicate themselves with cold meds, antihistamines, or products like Unisom, which she dislikes because she says people are using these without a doctor's guidance and putting themselves at risk for major complications. These are especially risky for the elderly, pregnant, and liver patients. There's a whole lot of other disorders, including sleep disorders, that will need to be ruled out before we um, resort to medication. She prefers to help patients learn and practice good sleep hygiene instead. That includes stop smoking, no alcohol before bed, don't look at your phone for two hours before you go to bed, take a hot shower, and set the room to a cool temperature. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, 33% of adults experience a form of insomnia. And even though Dr. Matthew doesn't like medications, I ask why 20% of her patients are taking prescriptions. My goal is to try to get them off safely if possible um, and have them not be on um, uh, a dependency mode with these medications. And can all come with major side effects like excessive sleepiness during the day, drug interactions, liver damage, their habit forming, and can cause respiratory depression which can suppress breathing in sleep apnea patients. The FDA has not approved melatonin for sleep, but it is considered safe to try. Now keep in mind, it's not meant to be taken regularly because your body can become dependent on it and stop making melatonin on its own. More younger people are at risk of developing osteoporosis. Researchers looked at the bone mineral density of nearly 200 adults between the ages of 35 and 50. 28 percent of men and 26 percent of women had osteopenia, a condition where bones are weaker than normal. It's also a precursor for osteoporosis. Experts say the best way to maintain good bone health is through weight bearing exercises like running, walking and jumping. Keep an eye on how much coffee you drink. A new study shows people who drink six or more cups a day increase their risk for heart disease by nearly 22% compared to those who only drank one or two cups a day. The study looked at 340 coffee drinkers between the ages of 37 and 73. Experts say high amounts of caffeine leads to high blood pressure, which increases your risk of developing heart issues. There have been 940 cases of the measles in the U.S. this year, according to the newest numbers from the Centers for Disease Control. Camila Bernal has the latest on what some states are doing to try to stop the spread of this highly contagious disease. The U.S. measles outbreak continues to spread. Since January, there have been 940 diagnosed cases across the country. And of the 26 states affected, New York has been the hardest hit with hundreds of reported cases in New York City and Rockland County since the outbreak began there last September. Across the state, parents are watching the total number of cases tick up week after week, and they're getting worried. New York legislators calling for an end to non-medical exemptions for vaccines. We want to make sure that everybody, if they want their children to go to a school, vaccinates their children. On Friday... <coughs> Maine passed a bill similar to what New York is trying to do, becoming only the fourth state in the U.S. to ban non-medical exemptions to all vaccines. I believe in the science behind vaccines. I think that uh, it's proven uh, that community immunity protects at-risk individuals. I'm thrilled to sign this bill. In April, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee signed a law removing personal exemptions from just the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. Religious and medical exemptions are still allowed. And in Oregon, legislators are working on a bill to ban non-medical exemptions. I'm Camila Bernal reporting.